Hello, my little witchy wonders. It's Ethany, and I'm here to share with you my nine essential tools for your craft. Now, this is meant to be the list that I share with people when they say, what do I need to get to start practicing the art of magic? So without further ado, let's jump in. My first tool that I recommend for the witch is a clear quartz point. Now you don't need to go out and get something like this because believe me, this is not cheap. Remember your spiritual practice should not bankrupt you in any way, shape or form or make you stress about money. But I'm just talking about a clear quartz point that you can use. And the reason why I'm choosing this is First of all, you can program a clear quartz point. You can use it for many things. And one of the things that I teach my students in my coven is how to use it to connect with your spirit guides in your astral temple. This is going to be something that these students use all the time. And even if you don't use that, clear quartz can be used for pretty much any substitution because it is a energy magnify it amplifies everything up and it's going to help you in all your practice the other thing is is that it can help you direct energy as well if you want to use it for that it's very versatile and that's the reason why i put it on my list the second tool i'm going to recommend is a cauldron now i know there are lots of stereotypes like the old hag stirring it and causing mistress thanks hamlet but the reason why we use cauldrons is cast iron is amazing. Now, if you don't want to go and buy an expensive one, here's a little tip, my little witchlings. Go to a camping store or an army surplus store and you will find cast iron pots really cheap and they are excellent for your use. Cauldrons can be used to contain fire so when you're burning things in a ritual they are wonderful because you're not going to set anything on fire and it's not going to amplify it don't use brass i've done a lot of damage using brass they are fantastic for holding water so you have this ability to make potions or to make a tincture or to make a spell water or put it out under the moon to use your moon water or put water in it and to do scrying. See, there's so many different things you can do with cauldrons. Cauldrons are really important. And even if it's just a small one, I highly recommend you have one on your little tool list and have it in your kit. I have a couple of cauldrons. Both of them are very small. I live in an apartment and I don't have space for a massive cauldron, but believe you me, the day I get my house, I'm going to go get me a big cauldron like I used to have in Australia. The third recommendation might seem a little strange, but it is a candle snuffer. Now, the reason why I have put a candle snuffer on this list is that when you're blowing out your candles in a ritual, you don't want to spray wax everywhere, which is, again, something I've done. And secondly, you don't want to blow the magic out. You want to snuff your candle in a way that is going to allow your magic to stay centered in the candle. So, for example, if you're doing a seven day spell on a one candle so a seven day candle spell you want to snuff that out so that you're actually bringing the magic and keeping it inside that candle candle snuffers are absolutely fantastic and they feel super super classy <laughs> even though they're like super basic and here's another little tip Ethany's tip through all these things I found one at a dollar store so they don't even have to be expensive Number four on the list is a book of shadows or a journal. Now, many of you know me well, and you know that I have a plethora of books of shadows and journals, and that's because I have been practicing my craft since I was 15 years old, and I'm nearly 40, so it's been a long, hot minute. So I have got journals that have got my tarot spreads in them. I have journals that have my dreams in them. I have journals that just have like my everyday, but then I have my grimoires, my books of shadows. And these have correspondences, spells, Sabbath information, moon phase information, elemental information, and, and all sorts of different um, sort of recipes for magic in it. It's a way to keep my magic in one place. Now, 
you don't have to do things traditionally. You don't even have to have a physical book. You can go and create something online. There are lots of apps you can use as well. So you've got it on your phone and you can take photos and then put them in there. Look, it's a digital age, baby. But having something to record your progress and to be able to write things out, even if you're doing a vlog for yourself, just recording your practice is really important. It's going to see that you're able to go back and reflect and see what changes have happened, see how you've evolved. And that's really fun. But I love having somewhere that I can go back and look at all of my recipes and my secret ingredients for my magic. And that's why I recommend a book of shadows. It's pretty much essential, even if you just collage or whatever art, whatever it is, go have fun. But it's a really important tool to, for every witch to have. My fifth recommendation is a divination tool or tools. Now, there are a lot of divination tools and I know I need to do a bit more exploring and fun <laughs> with them on this channel, but I do have a couple of videos which I will link down below on different divination tools I've used over the years, but it's really simple. Just pick one that works with you and don't forget to experiment. Doesn't mean you have to go out and buy all of them, but just have fun. Whether you want to use tarot, which of course is my personal favorite, if you're had an artist, or you have oracle decks, pendulums, scrying mirrors, crystal balls, runes. You could use um, casting stones. Uh, you can do charm casting. Every culture as well has its own beautiful, unique way of using divination, but just something to help you connect with that other side of your brain and to connect with your guides or your higher self or your inner compass, however you want to uh, sort of explain that for yourself. That is what I'm talking about. I have a number of divination tools as it is one of my favorite things to do. And it also helps me exercise my clairs. So if you don't know what they are, I'm talking like clairvoyance, clairsentience, clairaudience, all that kind of jazz. But divination tools are super important. Um, they are something I think should be in every witch's cabinet. Number six is a moon calendar or a moon diary, a moon app or a farmer's almanac or a collection of those. I have a moon calendar, so I always use Wee Moon every year. When I was in Australia, I used the moon calendar, um, which I think is just mooncalendar.com.au. I freaking or oh, moon diary sorry moon diary i love their stuff i have i've kept my old ones because there's a lot of notes and things in there they are beautiful um so i use we moon here i used moondiary.com.au i know stacy demarco and rockpool have got like a number in australia that you can use and there is so many up here like llewellyn does a whack of them every single year they do like a moon one as well there's got spells and articles all the way through them so pick one that you think will be fun um i just use the moon uh calendar now by we moon and i use a moon app it's just called moon um, and that'll tell me every degree that the moon is in and when it's full and that's really handy to have and a farmer's almanac is really great if you have a witch's garden again I live in an apartment, although I have a lot of house plants. I don't really do any. Oh, we have a basil plant. There we go. I correct myself, but we don't really do a lot of planting. So a farmer's almanac is great for those who want to grow a witch's garden or even for those who really want to be really connected to the seasons and what's going to happen with the weather and all that kind of stuff. They're really great. You're going to use it a lot in your magic for timing. So when the moon is new, when it's going to be full, when it's waxing, waning, uh, you're going to use it a lot for what I love about moondiary.com and we moon is they have all the Sabbaths, um, which is great. All the eclipses, you're going to know when your moon is transit trans transiting through the different star signs and the same with the sun. So it's really an essential tool for every single witch to have in their toolkit. Number seven is cleansing tools. I'm talking about energetically cleansing and orically cleansing your space. So this could be anything from having Palo Santo and sage and any smoke sort of ceremonial cleansing things you want to use all the way through to some sprays. Now I use aura sprays and I use one of my favorites, which I've talked about for many years, smudge off because I'm asthmatic. Um, I have really bad allergies. So having something that's not fire based is really great. 
I have one next to my bed. I travel with it. I use it all the time. So that is something that I would recommend you getting or you can even make it yourself. They are wonderful. I know a couple of brands that are really great and I'll pop that in the link below again if you don't know um, that brand. Having something to cleanse your space is really important. When you're really aware of energy and you're building energy and you're casting magic or you're working on your mindset, however you do your form of craft, you're going to be bringing things to you and releasing things. And you might find that sometimes you get static in your aura or you're feeling a little bit funky and you're not quite sure why it's time to cleanse. And I know for myself, like when things start to go like fall over a lot or whatever, I'm like, ah, we probably have a little bit of a low level energy that's coming into this apartment. There's three highly sensitive people in here. So I always know when it's time to cleanse. I have videos on how to cleanse. Actually, I think I have a video of how to cleanse your space on my channel. I will pop it in the link below uh, in the description box below. Sorry. And you can see how I do it, but grabbing some tools to cleanse your area is really important. Find what works for you. My eighth tool recommendation is candles. And if you don't get anything else, get white candles, even if you can only get your hand on tea light candles from a dollar store. I have a lot of candles. Again, I'm very lucky. Wish candles are amazing. You can go find these in a lot of magical stores. They're usually very cheap, like two or three for a dollar. They're like super great. You don't need a lot of storage space. If you're like me, again, apartment, um, you can get a variety of colors. And again, white can be used as a substitute for anything. So the reason why candles are on here is not be just because we all look fire by candlelight. <laughs> get it? Um, it is because candle magic is very versatile. It's very easy. And it's something I recommend most of my students and practitioners of the craft really start with because you don't need a lot of stuff for it. So you can even make your own candle holder with like air dry clay, or you can just go purchase usually where they sell the little wish candles. You can find little small ones, but basically having a collection of candles in your apothecary <laughs> is going to allow you to do lots of different types of magic. It's very easy. You can learn how to use different herbs to roll them and you can use different oils to anoint them. You can carve them, empower them. There's so much you can do with candle magic. And again, we all look really beautiful by candlelight. So um, that's an extra bonus. And I think candles need to be in every witch's wardrobe. And again, if anything, white candles, but you can start collecting your chakra colors from there because they're pretty much the colors you're going to be using. Oh, and black. Make sure you get black. My ninth and final selection is a basic herb kit. Now I could go through and do another video of like, the best herbs to use for witches, but basically, look, I'm going to break it down for you. Most of the herbs that you can use in a lot of great magic can be found in your kitchen, and I'm not even joking. So if you can't get herbs from an apothecary or you can't grow them yourself, do not fret, my little loves. You can use your herbs in your kitchen. Something else I found really interesting, and I'd love to hear from people around the world. Um, here in Canada, they now have fresh herbs in a fridge that you can plant. That's how we have our basil plant. I'd love to know people are doing that, like if other grocery stores and stuff are doing that around the world, because they're doing it here and it's really cool. So that way you go and buy it once and then you can like plant it and have it forever. So we have our little basil plant and now we can use that for magic if I want to. So here are some of the herbs that I recommend you have and you might find them in your kitchen. I recommend that you have basil, really good for love and money, cinnamon, Again, a really good herb, or it's a spice, for money. Bay leaves, fantastic for telling the truth and getting the truth out of people. Rosemary, a wonderful protective herb. You are going to love using rosemary. Thyme is another really good one for money. Oregano, or oregano as you weirdos here in the, <laughs> in the Northern Hemisphere say, is really good for luck. 
lavender, a, a flower that is wonderful for peace and calming, rose for love and salt, 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 get salt. This is great for protection. Now, a lot of the time I get people asking me, oh my gosh, what if I only have like table salt? That's fine. What if I can only get bay leaves dried from the supermarket? That's fine. Look, witches have to adapt. And a lot of the craft comes from kitchen craft, comes from everyday things you have and using them to create magic. But those are some of the things I recommend that are easily, easily obtainable. Honestly, like I can go for a walk in my neighborhood and find rosemary, I can find lavender, um, all those sorts of things around my neighborhood as well. I know a lot of my neighbors, they don't mind that I take a little bit of their rosemary bushes. So adapt, adapt, evolve. But those are some of the things I recommend you have in your pocket fairy. And if you build your herbs and spices and resins from there, that's fantastic. Okay, my little witchlings, those are my nine recommendations that every witch should have in their toolkit, especially for beginners. Did I miss something? What would you also recommend in the toolkit? I wanted to make this very accessible. Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you all very soon.